The Little Fisherman and the Angry Volcano. Once upon a time, there was a small fishing village set between the sea and a volcano. The villagers loved the sea and all of the tasty fish it gave them. A tasty fish! Thank you, sea! You're welcome. But they feared the volcano and its fiery temper. Oh, no! We must appease its fiery temper! I shall find the most beautiful of presents for the sea. The sea will be pleased and protect us from the volcano. <laughs> Lupin, what are you doing here? Oh, please, can I be the hero? I love giving presents. Well, okay. Yes! But don't waste any time, though. The volcano is grumbling. Okay. <laughs> will be so pleased that it will protect the village for a thousand years at least! Woohoo! <laughs> the volcano grumbled louder as the young fishermen set off in search of a gift for the sea and reached the heart of the jungle. So, what can I give to the sea? He noticed a very beautiful piece of fruit and thought that that would make a lovely gift for the sea. Hmm. Uh, just above your head, Lupin. Uh a piece of fruit? Are you sure? Shouldn't we, like, give him a... Oh, look! A parrot's feather? Now that's a cool present! There you go. The fisherman picked a piece of fruit in an original way and returned to the village with his presents. Wait, what's in there? Wow! <laughs> uh, the young fisherman was drawn by uh, a light and entered a cave. Wow! Oh, look how pretty that shiny mushroom is! <laughs> uh, Lupin, that piece of fruit was fine. Uh, there's loads of fruit everywhere. I've never seen a mushroom like this before. That would make an awesome gift. Ouch! Hmm? <laughs> oh, dear. Lupin, I think you've disturbed the cave's residence. I guess he doesn't want me to take this mushroom. Hmm? Well... This piece of fruit isn't so bad after all. Ah, you see, Lupin? That's what I said. <laughs> hey, Mr. Monkey, I have a present for you. <laughs> and there you go. Now I've got a totally unique mushroom to give to the sea. <laughs> oh, no. My unique mushroom isn't unique at all. Ugh, I guess this isn't such a good present after all. <laughs> You're leaving it behind? After all that effort? Look, he said I'd find an exceptional present, and that's what I'm gonna do. Even if it means searching the entire island. about a present is the intention behind it. Uh, you must hurry. The volcano is grumbling louder and louder. Yes, of course, the volcano. There must be something truly exceptional up there. The young fisherman, uh, still in search of a present, climbed to the top of the volcano. Whoa, a volcanic rock. Watch out, Lupin. It's dangerous up here. Whoa, this will make a perfect present. Don't uh, uh, disturb me on my volcano. I'm sorry, Mr. Volcano Monster. I didn't mean to bother you. I was just looking for a present for the sea. 
For the sea? Yes, obviously. The sea is always the one who gets frozen. Uh, I won't be disturbing you much longer. Bye-bye! Uh, Open! Watch out! Uh, the young fisherman managed to escape the volcano with his gift. I've got the present! I've got the present! No! Are you okay, Lupin? No, I just wanted to make the sea happy. And instead, I made the volcano even angrier. And now the whole village is in danger just because I didn't know how to choose a gift. You know, Lupin, when you give someone a present, it's the intention that counts more than anything. Oh, a shell. Now that's a fantastic present, and I know someone who will appreciate it. The young fisherman hurried to give his present to the sea. But, uh, Lupin... Wait! Mm. Mm. Mr. Volcano, I've brought mm. you this present to apologize for disturbing you. A present? Mm -hmm. If you hold it up to your ear, you can hear the sea. Mm. Magnificent! This is the very first time I've been given a present. Thank you so much. <laughs> and that is how the volcano calmed down. It never lost its temper again with the villagers, who no longer had to fear its anger. The end. Well done, Lupin. You solved the problem. Well, what about the sea? It still hasn't received a gift. Hmm. And so, the young fisherman gave the sea a present as well. Both sea and volcano were delighted, and together they became the village's protectors. The end. And lava grilled fish is truly delicious. Here, Mr. Narrator, a gift for you. What? Uh, Lupin, thank you. <laughs> Incomprehensible Healer. Once upon a time, a group of villagers lived in peace, listening closely to nature. We listen closely to nature. Suddenly, the plants began to fall ill. What's happening? Oh, no. Kapora, spirit of the forest. Ill is she. Quickly heal her I must, but path dangerous for old women such as me, who accompany me dad. Me? Huh? I will. <sighs> Lupin, what are you doing here? Oh, let me help the healer. That poor woman is even tinier than me. Tiny perhaps, but very wise indeed. Well, okay, but follow yeah. her advice carefully. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Mrs. Healer, let's go! <laughs> uh, what? Oh, sorry. Ah. Oh. <laughs> and so, the brave villager made his way deep into the jungle with the elderly healer. They reached a river full of crocodiles. Fortunately, the healer knew how to avoid them. Uh -oh. Wicked Saurian to chastise? Pressure on nostrils is advised. Huh? Chat with who? What is she talking about? If you don't understand, you can always ask her to repeat um, herself. Oh, no, there's no need to bother her with that. I know what to do. Hold on, Mrs. Healer. Without following the healer's advice, the villager nonetheless reached the other side of the... Uh, in fact, no. He found himself in a very dangerous situation. Luckily, the vine is solid. <laughs> Nature increasingly hostile is because Kapora in greater pain. Hurry, we must. Yes, don't worry. I've got this. Hmm? <laughs> Ah! Ah! 
the villager carrying the healer rushed on ahead to reach Kapora. But more carnivorous flowers appeared and prevented them from coming closer. Kapora's home, the plants do shield. Delicate diplomacy you must wield. Uh, well, yeah, sure. <laughs> Something tells me that you didn't hmm? quite understand. Perhaps you should tell her that. No, I understood all that. Watch! In anger they are now. Get past them, never they allow. Oh, no, that's it. We'll never make it. Don't worry, Lupin. I'm sure the healer can help you. But I don't understand anything she says. Melodic intonation might provide consolation. See what I mean? You know, this old woman's gibberish is pertinent. Huh? What does that mean? Oh, yes. I mean to say her complicated words are good advice. <gasps> You're right. I need to talk to her. <laughs> Madam, I don't understand a word you say. Oh, maybe you could repeat that with other words? Of course. <laughs> to placate the plants, warble you must. Mm, or what? Sorry, I still don't understand. Oops, sorry. Obscure sometimes I am. Like a bird, whistle you must. The flowers thus will understand we are well-meaning nature's friends. Ah, I get it. I understood everything that time. Whistle, I know not how. <laughs> Lupin and the healer could finally enter Kapora's lair. They reached Kapora's side at last. The spirit of nature was in a dreadful state. Oh. Hmm. Fever has she. Fulham and silicate bring you must. An unguent I may concoct thus. Uh, <clears throat> Oops, sorry. Bring me sap and bring me mud. I'll make some medicine. Thanks! Much better. <laughs> and so, Kapora was cured of her fever, and nature recovered her fine colors once again. The end. Good. Homeward huh? heading, all we need to do. What? Not walking back all that way again. <laughs> oh, wait. I have an idea. From then on, the healer could heal Kapora by herself, and very quickly. The end. Now we don't need to carry her anymore. Well done, Lupin. Just do the same as me. Press your lips together and blow. <laughs> <laughs> At least you know how to express yourself with simple words. <laughs> <laughs> The Angry Sisters and the Frog. Once upon a time, there were two sisters as different as can be. Kaya was tidy and considerate and loved to organize parties. Happy birthday, Emily! Oh! <laughs> her sister Sora was an apprentice witch and everyone feared her clumsiness. I too have a present for you. <laughs> <Huh>? <laughs> 
Sora, what have you done? She's the worst witch ever. Everything's ruined because of her. We're fed up with Sora. <gasps> Rebuked by the villagers, Sora picked up the frog and vanished. Ah. Anoki must be found before nightfall, or he'll remain a frog forever. Oh. I shall find my sister and bring back our friend. <laughs> hey. Lupin, what are you doing here? Can I replace Kaya and save Anoki, please? Well, okay, Lupin. Yes. But you must look after your things carefully. The entire village is counting on you. Yes, I promise. <laughs> Wait, Kaya, take these three magic objects with you. A map to find your way, a feather to stop your enemies, and a stone that will light up in Anoki's <gasps> presence. Perhaps you should take the time to put those precious objects away more carefully, Lupin. Ah, uh, it's fine. I put everything inside my bag. And so, the very meticulous Kaya headed into the jungle to free her friend. The young girl came to a crossroads. A crossroads? Without hesitation, Kaya took out the magic map, neatly folded inside her pouch. Oh, yeah! Let's see. Saucepan, scarf, the feather, the stone. Oh, and a snack. Yummy. Uh, Lupin, you haven't lost the map, have you? Hmm? Oh, listen. No need for that magic map. I hear a frog. Maybe it's a Noki. It's coming from over there. <sighs> Kaya preferred to trust her ears rather than the map. The frog is right there. Yeah. <laughs> With the stone, I'll know for sure if it's a note. Mm -hmm. But where'd it go? Hey! Wait! The magic feather! We have to stop the crocodile! Oh, the stone! It's not lighting up. This isn't a note. Whoa. The stone! Oh, no! Ah! Kaya continued her journey through the jungle. And at last, she reached a frog pond, which was overwhelming. Lupin, how will you manage without the stone? Hmm, let's see. There must be one who looks like an oki. An oki? Hmm? Hmm? Oh, Aww, they all look just the same. How can I tell which one is the right one? Hey! Hey, I stop moving around. Anoki! <gasps> a yellow tongue? Sora, give me the frog! Because everyone thinks I'm useless, this frog is staying here with me! Oh no! Anoki! <gasps> no way! <gasps> Oops! Quick, the feather! Hey, the map! Uh, uh, the feather! <laughs> oh no, I've lost everything. All I have left is the map. If I had been neat and tidy with those things, I would have found what was needed in time. Now Anoki will be a frog forever, and it's all my fault. Perhaps all is not lost, Lupin. <sighs> Anoki! Anoki! Hmm. <gasps> You're right! I have an idea. <laughs> Lupin, how will you 
recognize Anoki. Don't worry. Now I know that Anoki has a yellow top. Oh, here you are, Anoki. Come on, let's go back to the village. Kaya had succeeded. She took Anoki back to the village. Sora was forbidden from practicing magic and was banished to live in exile with her frogs forever. The end. Wait a sec. Sora. Why did you change Anoki into a frog? I didn't mean to. I got the spell wrong. I am terribly clumsy. I was so ashamed that I ran away. So it really was an accident. Look, I'm sure we can find a way for you to stay in the village. With help from the venerable witch, Sora was able to restore Anoki's human shape. And the birthday party could at last take place. Happy birthday, Anoki! Sora was forgiven. The venerable witch watched over her progress in magic, and the young apprentice improved day by day. <laughs> the end. Well done, Lupin. This is a wonderful birthday party. But what are you doing? I'm sorting out my bag. I'm so very tidy now. Hmm? What are you doing here? <laughs> 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 oh.